What's up everybody, Sailor Polly here. Please subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you know when the next video drops. Okay, let's go. I arrived in Okercox Harbor and was looking for a place to anchor. I had already assembled my bigger fortress anchor in the mud position. I routed the anchor line forward around the outside of the shrouds to the bow, through the bow rail and then back to the stern, under the jib sheet to the cockpit where I tied off the bitter end. I usually store my road by wrapping it up in three bundles of about 50 feet each. I unwrapped my first bundle to route my anchor line. That means I already had 50 feet of road ready to deploy. This is a big anchor that stores in five pieces and is bolted together, but I was able to assemble and route it before arrival as I self-steered my boat across the Pamlico Sound using the sheet to tiller method. You can see more about that in my other videos, so subscribe, like, leave a comment, and ring that bell. So here I am coming by the downtown dinghy dock area. I'm not really going to anchor it this close. I'm going to go over towards the lighthouse way back there. It's going to be in about 10 feet of water. Uh, it's going to be soupy mud. So I have this anchor set to the mud setting. The fortress anchor has a mud setting. It's basically a different pitch and this allows it to bite the loose soft mud better. Now I'm going to lower my sail as I motor in to my spot. Okay, and now I'm going to throttle down. I know the boat's going to fall off a little bit as I drop my hook. So here I'm going to lower it carefully into the water, making sure that I don't get snagged on my prop. I'm still just puttering. And I know I've got 50 feet out already. So now I'm going to let out a little more. And see it's already routed to the bow. This is what's so effective about this procedure is you throw it over the side, it's almost instantaneously catching on something and then you're paying out line. And your motor is already going. So now I'm going to turn this motor around. I have a little wing nut down here that uh, locks the motor so I'm loosening it. And I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees. That's my reverse. I can go anywhere in reverse like this. It's like a front wheel drive car. Okay, so now... I'm backing down on the motor. And you want to really dig it in good. Once the boat comes to a halt, you know you've dug your anchor in. And you know, if you don't have a motor, uh, all you can really do is drop the anchor and then rest on it for a second and then pay out a bunch of line and then let the wind sort of blow the boat back and then grab it and pull it back in and try to really manually dig it in. Uh, but the motor is a great way to do it. And you need to use this motor or it's never gonna work. Okay, so now I'm shutting off all the gas and the air valve, and I'm at anchor. Once I'm at anchor, I like to do a tiller lock. And I just tie a little bowl in here to hold the end of the tiller extension. That usually holds my tiller pretty steady. That's the way I do it. Oh, it's not big enough. I'm going to have to open it up and make it a little bigger. So the bitter end of my anchor line is actually, you'll see the black bowline right there. 
uh, and then over here you can see uh, my last 50 foot bundle is still hanging. So at this point I know I have a hundred feet of line paid out and I'm anchored. Now I'm just going to open up this last bundle. I have one cleat on my bow, so often I tie off my anchor line with a clove hitch on a winch. This keeps me in the cockpit throughout the whole procedure. If it starts to blow, I may decide to tie the anchor line to the bow cleat, and then this line will be tied three times. I attach the clove hitch, keeping the overlapping lines on the starboard side of the winch. This keeps the line pulling against the ratcheting mechanism of the winch. Here on my port winch, you can see a white anchor line attached with a clove hitch. This is my smaller Danforth anchor. I always have this anchor set up for a quick deployment. This anchor is small enough that it fits in my cockpit floor and I just push it all the way to stern with all the extra road. At this point I feel like my anchor is set pretty well, but I'm kind of close to this little dock over here. At this point the boat started to swing on the anchor and I noticed that Rainbow Dash was starting to swing to port. So I realized there was an opportunity here to raise my sail a little bit just to give myself a little more momentum to the port side where I would then drop my other anchor. I coaxed the boat along a little by tightening the mainsail and steering the tiller a little bit to help us bear away to port and get as far as I could on that hundred feet of line I have out. Then I dropped or lowered carefully my other anchor on my port side and I untied my clove hitch and began paying the line out. I cleated this anchor with a hundred feet of line out. Now I feel comfortable knowing I have two anchors out in a Bahamian mooring. Thanks for watching. I hope you find what you're looking for. Peace.